Welcome back everyone to Sally's Rods and Customs. Uh, just a quick video today. I'm just going to show everyone what I've done with my plasma cutter. You can see underneath it there I've got a, I've got a, um, a tank and on that tank I've got a little pump just there. So um, what I've done is I'm able to drain that water pan back to that tank and when I need to I just pump it back up and let it drain back down when I'm finished. So keeps it nice and clean. It, um, it takes all the swarf off through a strainer down the bottom down there, all the crap gets stuck in there so it doesn't stay in your pan. And um, it's cheap and it works, so watch this and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so I've had a lot of people ask me about um, my water circuit on the, this cooling water circuit on the um, JD's Garage plasma car. So what I'm gonna show you here today is what I've got. So in one of the previous videos I showed you in the center of the pan, I have a drain plug, just like a common, common drain, um, common drain plug in a, like a bathroom vanity. Um, what I've got down here is, move this light around for you so you can see it a bit better. Um, you can see up here where the connection is from the drain pipe. There's a bush there, T-piece, the T-piece comes off it runs down this hose into this into this little tank here. This tank's got a pump on it. It's got um, two valves. I don't need both of them to run, but I've got one of them connected up. You can see on the side of the T-piece here where I connected the hose into it, runs down to the front of the pump here. Um, there's a main drain valve here, which I can turn off. So what I do is I turn the main drain off, just PVC pressure, pool pump pressure um, pipe goes into the top of this tank. You see in this tank it's got a gauze in there to catch all the crap when you're doing your cutting all the swarf and stuff gets stuck in there and you can take that drain out and clean the swarf out which pretty much keeps your tank clean. So what I do to fill it is I shut this main drain valve, I open the fill line here. I'm going to get a switch and put it in line here instead of this instead of this plug arrangement and then I um, Try and plug these in with one hand. Um, come on, you bloody thing, stay there. And it's connected up to my battery on my um, engine run stand over there. So what's, that little pump's running there, you can hear it. It fills quite fast. This um, this tank here, you can see it's already starting to get some, you see the sort of coolant moving around in there. At the moment, you can see it probably takes about two or three minutes and it'll fill this. This tank's quite big. It's, um, I think it's like um, 1300 by 1500. In 1300 millimeters by 1500 millimeters. So it's quite large. As you can see it's um, pumping water up in here now. You can see it moving around. So yeah, that'll, that'll fill to that, um, That particular pump um, and tank assembly, there's a, uh, it's one out of a, um, like a, a, a weed sprayer tank that goes in the front of a quad bike or back of a tractor, back of a loader on a property. Um, yeah, so that I filled this, I filled this um, pan first and then I knew the level, I was probably, I was probably 10 or 15 mil down from the tops, 50 millimeters deep. And then from there, I knew the volume of this tank and I have the tank marked for a fill, fill volume. Inside that tank, it's just, it's just coolant out of a car. It's a watered down mix, all I've wanted it for so it doesn't, doesn't rust all the, all the fingers on the, um, on the pan. Last thing I do is have, have all that stuff rusting up. Uh, but yeah, it um, seems to be working pretty good, it's probably, a quarter full already um, and as you can see up here it's starting to it's it's halfway up that angle line section there at the moment and you, can see, you can see this is the side I've been cutting on over here it, um, it, it gets a bit rusty and shitty on the bottom but once it's wet that stuff wipes off so you can give it a bit of a wipe bit of a rub with a brush, drain the tank, 
drain it to the tank, um, and all that material stays clean in your in your pan. So what I'll do is I'll turn it off. You don't need to see the whole thing fill up. But like I said, all right, there we have it. We have the we have the pan filled with liquid. So that took oh, I don't know. That was I think it was 50 liters, 50 liters of water, and it's probably only halfway up that pan. It's just above the bottom rib there. Um, I didn't want it to splash too high. I'm going to try and search for something that sort of fits on the side of this pan here, like a bit of a splash guard to stop it splashing everywhere when it gets when it cuts a does a cut close to the edge. But the yellowy colour that's in there, I didn't have any proper um, proper plasma cutter coolant or whatever you call it for in the pan, so I just used some of this. This is a I had probably two liters of this. Nulon um, coolant left in in, the, in this bottle, so I just put two liters of that. It's a 100% concentrate, so um, well, four liters of this should make eight liters of of coolant for your engine. I just I don't want it for cooling purposes. I just want it for the anti-corrosion purpose. So if it splashes around, it shouldn't rust everything. Hopefully, um, but who knows? We'll we'll see how that goes. So that's what I got in the pan there. Got the liquid in there ready to. Um, ready to run. And then I shut this fill valve here and I open this drain valve. As you can see there just, it can't go too fast because it splashes out, but you can see there it just drains back out into the tank. Really simple process. I think this tank was something like 100 and, 150 bucks with the pump, everything on it. There's probably 30 or 40 dollars worth of pipe work and stuff on there. Then it's just connected up to a car battery. Um, I guess you can get a little 12 volt um, transformer or something and connect it up, maybe even off your main power supply box, which I'll look into. But um, yeah, it's really simple. Good way to keep your pan clean um, and not have the fluid go all stagnant in the top all the time. So. Um, yeah, just thought I'd show you that quickly, just so you understand what I've done there. Just another little improvement. Next job, I'm going to get on Fusion, Fusion 360, and make some make some feet for these for these rollers. And I'm going to put the I'm going to put the whole stand up on some some rollers so I can move it around because it's kind of fixed in one location here in my shop, and I need to be able to move it around as as I need the space. So yeah, there you go. Pretty simple. Yeah, have any questions about it, hit me up. I'll explain what I did. I'll take some more photos for and show you. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really simple process. I generally just leave this drain valve open for a day or two just to make sure every drop is drained out. Cause you can see in the bottom of my pan, I had it pressed to a center point. So all the water goes to the middle. It doesn't have anything sticking around, which is why you can see under here, I've got a few packers in around the pan just to just to keep the, the pan from bowing and buckling around. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. That's just a short one, under 10 minutes. Um, that should make a few people happy. A few people have asked about it and that's what I've done. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.